in this video I'm going to show you how I created this fantasy island using Photoshop. So let's get started. What's up guys, Drewal here and as you can hear from my voice that I am a little bit sick so my voice might not be the best. Also, this is not going to be a step by step tutorial but rather I want to show you the process of how I made this. So think of it uh, as more of an intermediate tutorial or a little bit advanced tutorial. For this type of composite, it's good to create a new document uh, always. Now I knew that I wanted to create a uh, like an, an island so I needed a base. For that I created a perfect rectangle using shift key on a new layer make sure. And then here's a trick to create any kind of base in perspective. You press like your transform options and you rotate it using shift key. You confirm it. Then you press your transform options again and then when you right click and select perspective now you can make it yay in perspective. So stretch it out maybe not, not that much. Then you press your transform options again and this time you squeeze it so you flatten it out and suddenly now you have a really cool base that also looks 3D. And then you hold your control key and then you can drag it a little bit to the right because if it's in a straight line both corners it doesn't look that dynamic like at least for me uh, and then confirm it now for the base usually people go and use mountain images so I found this photo of mountain and thought it was really good uh, and I just flipped it uh, oops I just flipped it upside down like this and I saw that okay this has potential I can use it so confirm it and then just make select I made selection of the mountain like this now usually I won't I will mask something like this but right now I just I know that I'm just gonna use this portion so control J uh, so now I have copy uh, of this mountain which is perfect for me and then uh, I'm gonna put this mountain under the base like this and then I will use my transform options to fit it properly and uh, finally you can just uh, right click and select this warp option to warp it around and for the rest of the areas I just straight up deleted them using lasso tool So at this point I decided okay I need a sky to well give it some kind of backdrop because it's a island that's floating. So I found this image of this beautiful sky. So I kind of knew just from the sky alone that okay I want to make it a bit more like a sunset vibe, give it like nice and fun. And as you can see lighting also already matches properly. Uh, and then when I was midway in my file I realized that it still needed some more base. So I also added some clouds at the bottom, something like this. Now if you're lazy you can just use the cloud photo but I wanted to like give it a bit more the variety. So I used both images and then the very first thing that you do before you start adding in like the smaller objects and stuff uh, is I like to add my light source. So for that I just usually fill in the layer with black color then I go to filter and then I add a lens flare and I usually like 105 because it has very little details and it's easy to blend in so I want my light source on the right so I'm gonna keep the lens flare there and then you change the blend mode to screen so now you have your light source coming in uh, and then I just change the colors so usually I use adjustment layer but screw it like um, I can also directly bring up my hue saturation layer and then colorize it 
Okay, that's good. Now I want to like make the clouds a bit more shiny. So what I did is I created new uh, curves layer. And first of all, actually I added a bit more red. Uh, and then I also added a bit more yellow like this. And then uh, in my RGB, I made everything a little bit brighter. So don't worry about everything. And then I just control I on your mask to hide everything. Uh, and then I just painted it back again uh, on the parts that were <coughs> visible. Oh, sorry, on the parts that were facing the sun. So something like this, you know. Now it's time to add the windmill. So I'm gonna go and find the photo. Where's the windmill here? And I place it. So uh, this was a bit uh, difficult to decide. I had to do the file a couple of times, but basically uh, I reduced the opacity and I tried to check like, okay, where will the windmill go? And I think that looks already pretty good. The only thing you have to do is try to make sure a lot of things go out of your island. So for example, this is the horizon, right? So things should go above it. And that is what makes it look 3D. That's that's the whole part, like the reason for doing this. So as you can see, even while making this tutorial, I just realized that my f it's a lot lower than what it should have been and I need to keep the windmill even higher. So how do I fix it? Well, I don't. I need to do the uh, masking again. So I'm just gonna delete the layer mask, uh, reduce the opacity and this time I will reduce it even more. And then the, I'm gonna make sure that this time <laughs> it actually uh, fits properly. Okay, so as you saw, I changed the background color instead of gray to something very bright green so I can easily see where uh, my base needs to be. So I only want this, I only want a little bit of grass and this is perfect. So now uh, I'm going to go and do the whole masking stuff again. So as you can see now it looks uh, a lot better and uh, it kind of looks that the windmill is actually there. Uh, another trick that I did was I changed my brush. So you go to your brush, right? And you have this dry media brushes and this first one is really useful. You go to your mask and that's why you use layer mask on this one and not the eraser because you want to bring some parts back. So this is really hard edge, right? With the grasses and how do you fix it? You will really change to white color and the brush has I think default flow of 38 which works fine so then you just bring the grass back up like this now also uh, and then I also did some color correction for the <coughs> windmill and as always, I created like a hue saturation layer and made everything darker. Uh, but then I turned it into a clipping mask. So now it only affects this layer. And then, yeah, control I. So you hide everything and then you change back to your uh, normal soft brush. And then you paint uh, on the opposite direction of the light. So I paint here like this. So now if I zoom out and I turn it on and off, see automatically it fits better with the lighting. 
another thing I did is create another hue saturation layer and uh, I did it to colorize and I made it a little bit more yellow to match the color of the sun basically right and don't worry you can change it later uh, and then again right click and create a clipping mask and then control I to hide everything and then I painted light back uh, with white color on the sides Uh, and then change its blending mode to overlay it's too strong I know so you change the opacity to like 50 or 60 percent so now if I turn it on and off hey it has some nice orange glow looks cool uh, to add few things I found this photo of rocks so I was like okay I want to add rocks and these are rocks Now here's another trick, right? When you're trying to cut something like this, because there's a straight line, it looks bad. So what you do, you when you cut out the rocks, you cut them through them. So <laughs> it's hard to explain with words, but you can see what I'm trying to do, right? You basically make sure that there is no straight line at the bottom. That's, that's all you have to make sure. So it doesn't even matter if it's accurate or not. Just make sure there is no straight line and we're good there we go now i wanted more rocks but i couldn't find the image it was a bit difficult so to fix it i just copied it a bunch of times so i press ctrl j uh, and i make a copy and i put this but i put the copy under the original you know to like make it a bit more messy uh, and make sure that it's not that very repeating and then I make another copy and put that one here like this now here you can see like uh, it looks little bit repetitive but I'm gonna show you how to fix it it already looks pretty good though uh, is that you get your eraser tool so you see this one is on the top right and you have some stones overlapping nice so you take your eraser tool and you just erase some of the stones randomly without any explanation and it just looks like they're on top of each other and whatever and for the bottom I did the same uh, I didn't even change the brush man it's just I used a soft brush and painted a little bit of grass on the top and I did the same for every single one of them So the stone problem is solved and I'm gonna again do the same thing with lighting and coloring but I'm just gonna group all three things. And another problem that I had was that there's not enough uh, shadows overall between grass and stone, right? Because this portion is so much darker. So create a new layer on top of everything. Usually uh, this is what I like to do. And then change the your brush to like 30 or 20%. And then you start painting until you can hide all of your mistakes and make sure that you have the soft round brush. okay getting there so much too dark too dark i know i know uh, so make it like um, like 30 percent opacity okay looks nice so that's what i did for the stones and using the same technique i was like okay you know what what else can i add there so i added some fence so for the fence, I'm going to go and show you the original photo just for the reference. 
This is the fence that I used and to cut out, there is no shortcut. I had to literally go and cut out every single square. Uh, I think I used uh, the polygon lasso tool to cut it out. Yeah, I used this one and then uh, manually I did everything. So it's just a painful process. It can be a bit hard, but take your time and do it. I'm not gonna do it even for the tutorial. I'm just gonna use the same fence that I have in my original file. <laughs> uh, I didn't mask all the fences. It doesn't make sense. It's the same repeating pattern. So what I did, So I have this fence here, right? So just like the stones, I created new adjustment layer, a clipping mask, and then I made the fence darker. So you know it looks like the light is coming from that side. And here's a fun trick that you can do to create rim light. Uh, so you have your fence cut out, right? So you do, you hold your control key, and then you click on your first fence. Now you can even merge these layers, it's, it's not a problem. Then you control shift and then you again click on the thumbnail and it will select both of them. Then you create a new blank layer that should be under your fence. I'm just gonna rename it to like a fence light, right? Uh, and then you pick uh, whatever orange color that your sun is. You can change it later as always. And then you fill it. So right now, nothing is visible, right? But if I turn off my fence, you can see, oh, we have really nice orange color. Remove your selection and then use your arrow keys to move it a little bit to the right. Now, of course, this is very, like, not that bright. Now you can again go and open up your hue saturation and make it more saturated, more bright or whatever it does for you. And now you have really cool fence with the rim light. And that's how I added the fence. And to create the shadow, it's, it's, it's even easier. So now you have your fence light, right? Make another copy of that and put that copy under your light. And now this time we call it fence uh, shadow. Then you press control T and then you like, uh, you know what, I wanna flip it, oh shit. And I'm gonna flip it vertically uh, and put it here like this. Then you hold your control key and then you just move it around. You hit enter, then you again bring up your uh, hue saturation and then you make the lightness zero. There, you have your shadow. <laughs> Uh, and in this shadow, first of all, I'm going to change the opacity to like 70-ish percent or like 50% even. And then you just take your eraser tool or layer mask if you don't want to, you know, risk it. And then you just erase it from here like this. And there you just created a really nice shadow in less than a minute. So that's also how I created the shadow. And another thing that I did, uh, same, so I'm doing the same stuff that I did for the stone, man. Uh, I again selected my brush with black color, low opacity, and then I did a little bit of painting here to give it some, you know, presence. Uh, I think 30 is still too much. So that's how I created the fence and I repeated the same procedure for the fence on the other side. I did it at rim light by the way because I know that it's completely under the shadow of the windmill so it's not gonna be visible anyway. So the fences are done. Now I wanted to add some random elements, you know, to make it feel more like a real place. So I found this PNG of this uh, branches. I don't know where I found it. I will do my best to search and put it in the description. 
but you can just you know search for PNG branch and it should be okay and I put it here like this so I was almost done but then I saw this part and I was like okay this uh, looks a bit strange the water is not going anywhere and I tried to uh, do the waterfall thing i was like okay let's make the waterfall and i was like yeah it didn't work either uh so i came up with a solution so here's what i did uh i went and i found this photo and this photo you can clearly see that the water meets the land and i was like perfect i can use this so i right clicked and i flip it um horizontally and I make the photo a bit smaller so it fits with my landscape uh, and then I make the opacity small to see if it aligns properly so that looked fine I made the opacity 100 and then here's the trick now I know that this photo is not going outside of the windmill photo for sure right you have to think a little bit about it so I take this layer and I put it right on top of my windmill you see this one I'm gonna rename it so you can understand it a little bit better so this is the windmill and this is the extra land that I added so this is my extra land and this is the windmill so because I clipped it you know because it's like a right click and I put it between a clipping mask so it already clips it so now I have hue saturation that applies on both of the layer and then I have this that applies on both layers so I don't have to do any color correction on this extra piece of land that I added isn't that like saves doesn't that save a lot of time and now all I have to do is simply go and either mask or erase so let's mask it And I also want to make everything a bit smaller. So I'm going to hold my click the island, hold the shift and click on the top, except the sun because I don't want to make that smaller. Uh, and I'm going to go and. Uh, nice. Uh, now I'm going to go and create a new blank layer on top of everything. Then press control option shift and E all of that together and I have the snapshot then I convert it to smart object because I want to do the camera raw filters so I apply the camera raw filters so in the camera raw filters first of all I added a little bit of yellow then a little bit of magenta just to go with the theme of you know beautiful evening and then I reduce the exposure a little bit uh, so that I can increase uh, other parts without overexposing. Then I added, lifted a little bit of shadows, not too much. Then I took my whites and pushed them to like a 40, 50 percent something. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm making the sun brighter, you know, like giving it that contrast. Uh, and then I lifted my blacks a little bit, so it's not too dark. Then I added a little bit of texture because I know there's like a lot of buildings and environment and stuff and texture works usually very good with that. And then I added a little bit of vibrance. And now I'm not sure like this thing was already in Camera Raw or they added recently. I've never used it before, but this was super useful. So I basically uh, changed a little bit uh, in my midtones shadows and highlights everything so there's no logic behind it okay i was just playing around and i was like oh man that looks good so i kept it <laughs> that's the honest reason uh, and for the blending uh, i put it to the 40 and for the balance i put it on 30. And that's I think pretty much it that's all I edited and then hit ok so this is without and this is with 
So that's how I created this windmill photo manipulation and I hope you found this video useful uh, and yeah my throat hurts I don't want to talk anymore so let's go to the end credits. So I hope you guys learned something if you did hit that like button you can also subscribe to my channel and hit that notification icon so every time I upload a new video you will get an update. I already have a lot of videos on my channel, feel free to check them out. So till then, I'm Dhruval telling you goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop. I'm so tired man, I don't want to finish this recording.